Hello and welcome to a discussion about how to record manufacturing transactions using the standard cost method. After viewing this video, you will be able to identify the journal entries made by the financial accountant and the cost accountant, record the adjusting entries to move product cost out of expense accounts, and record the movement of costs from work in process to finished goods to cost of goods sold, all using the standard costing method. The standard cost method is used to record manufacturing costs when the direct labor works on many different production lines and makes many different products and the same types of direct materials are used. The volume and variety of products and processes makes it very expensive to track the actual cost of making each product. The estimated cost of making each type of product is recorded to a separate work in process account and an adjustment is made at the end of the period to get the ending balances to the company's total actual cost. The financial accountant records the purchases of direct material, the direct labor expense, and all manufacturing overhead expenses incurred during the period. Direct materials is recorded as inventory and direct labor and manufacturing overhead are recorded as expenses. All product costs should be recorded as inventory until the inventory is sold to customers. The cost accountant moves the cost of direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead to work in process using an estimated amount since the actual cost of making products is not tracked to individual products. The estimated amounts must be adjusted to actual amounts in total for the company. These costs are then moved to finished goods when the product is complete and then on to cost of goods sold when products are sold. Let's take a detailed look at the entries made to record manufacturing costs by the financial accountant. The financial accountant records direct materials purchased to an inventory account. Direct labor works and this is recorded as an expense. Manufacturing overhead costs incurred are also recorded as expenses. The cost accountant makes adjusting entries at the end of the period to move product costs to work in process so they are not expensed in the period incurred and the matching principle is followed. The amount in the journal entry is always the standard cost of making all units during the period. The standard cost for one unit is an estimated cost that was determined when the cost sheet was prepared. This is done for each product made. The initial amount moved to work in process is the estimated cost of making products. An entry to adjust the estimated cost to the actual total cost for the company must then be made. Compare the actual amount of the cost incurred during the period to the estimated amount previously moved to work in process. The entry is made for the difference. Under applied occurs when the initial amount moved to work in process was too low and more cost must be added. Overapplied occurs when the initial amount moved to work in process was too high and cost must now be reduced. The cost of goods sold is used because the accountant does, no, does not know which product to record the adjustment to. The standard cost method records the estimated cost of making individual products. Each product has a separate work in process account to track the cost. The first step is to record the estimated cost for each product to the separate work in process accounts. The amount is the actual amount, the actual units made multiplied by the estimated cost of making one unit. The second step is to adjust the estimated cost of materials that was moved to work in process to the total actual materials used by the company. The amount originally recorded to work in process is too low and more cost must be added to get to the actual amount used. The adjustment is made to cost of goods sold because the actual cost to make each product is not tracked and it is not possible to know which specific work in process account to adjust. Let's go through the process for direct labor. The first step is to record the estimated cost for each product to the separate work in process accounts. The amount is the actual units made multiplied by the estimated cost of making one unit. 
The second step is to adjust the estimated cost of direct labor move to work in process to equal the total actual amount incurred by the company. The amount originally recorded to work in process is too high and the cost must be reduced to get to the actual amount incurred. The adjustment is made to cost of goods sold because it's not possible to know which specific work in process account to adjust. Manufacturing overhead is recorded differently, but it is recorded using the same steps as the normal method. The first step is to move actual manufacturing overhead expense to a temporary account until the estimated cost of making products is made. The estimated amount is then moved to the temporary account from the temporary account into work in process. The amount of cost moved to work in process is computed as the predetermined overhead rate multiplied by the amount of actual overhead activity and this is done for each product. It is the estimated cost of manufacturing overhead to make all the products. The estimated amount moved to work in process will not equal the actual amount. A true up entry to adjust the amounts in work in process to the actual amount is necessary. This next entry adjust the estimated amount that was moved to work in process to be equal to the actual amount of manufacturing overhead expense incurred in total for the company during the period. Under applied means that the amount of estimated costs moved to work in process is lower than the actual cost. When this occurs, the cost difference must be added. Over applied means that the amount of estimated cost moved to work in process is higher than the actual cost. In this case, the cost must be decreased. The purpose of this entry is to adjust the amount of manufacturing overhead costs that were moved to work in process to equal the actual total amount incurred for the company. Cost of goods sold is used in these entries because it is not possible to know which product's WIP account to adjust. To summarize, manufacturing overhead takes four entries to record. First, the financial accountant records actual manufacturing overhead to the individual accounts, such as rent expense, manager salary, utilities expense, etc. Second, all manufacturing overhead expenses are moved to a temporary holding account. Third, the estimated cost to make all products is moved to the work in process accounts using the estimated cost and the actual quantity of activity. Fourth, the estimated amount moved to work in process is adjusted to be equal to the actual amount incurred during the period. The cost of goods sold account is used when the company has a work in process account for each product and the actual amount required to make each product cannot be known. Either account in this entry can be a debit or a credit. The cost and work in process are moved to finished good when the products are complete. The same costs are moved to cost of goods sold when products are sold to customers. These amounts are always recorded at standard cost. Let's look in detail at the direct materials account. Picture this account as the item sitting on the shelf in the direct materials warehouse. Purchases are added and the estimate of materials used moved to the production line decreases the account. The adjustment made to get the materials used to actual in total for the company can be a debit or a credit. The ending balance is reported on the balance sheet. Each product has a separate work and process account that records the estimated cost to make products. The total cost to make each product is only an estimate then because the actual cost was not tracked. The ending balance in total for the company is determined by estimating the value of goods still remaining on the production line. The difference is the cost that was finished during the period. These costs are moved to finished goods. Work in process is generally an immaterial amount that is reported on the balance sheet at the estimated amount. Any difference in actual is not big enough to matter. Finished goods is the third inventory account. Cost of finished products are moved from the work in process account to the finished goods account. 
The ending balance is determined by counting and valuing the goods remaining in the warehouse at the end of the year. The difference to get to the balance is the cost of goods sold to customers. Goods sold to customers are moved to cost of goods sold. The original entry to move finished goods to cost of goods sold is done using an estimated cost. Each product cost adjustment to actual was made to the cost of goods sold account. These adjustments are posted here and can be either a debit or a credit. The balance is reported as an expense on the income statement. Cost in work in process moved to finished goods and then moved to cost of goods sold are initially recorded at the standard or estimated cost. The total company cost must be adjusted to actual cost because the total amounts on the financial statements must be actual values. If the difference in the estimated and actual cost is small and not material, the adjustment is made to the cost of goods sold account, which is what we just did. All product costs eventually become cost of goods sold. However, if the amount is significant, the difference must be allocated to all the product cost accounts for inventory and cost of goods sold in order to follow the matching principle. In this example, the difference in estimated and actual cost is significant at $100,000 and must be allocated to all inventory and cost of goods sold accounts. The accounts and the estimated balance in each account is listed. A percentage of the total is computed for each account. For instance, for direct materials, the balance of 184,845 is divided by the total of 1,031,837 to get the 17.9%. This process is the same process for work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. The next step is to multiply the difference by the percent to get the amount to allocate to each account. Then record the computed amounts to each account. This is an example of overapplied and costs are reduced. When the cost is underapplied, costs must be added to product cost with a debit. Direct material and direct labor accounts are also adjusted using the same method of allocation. After viewing this video, you should be able to identify the journal entries made by the financial accountant and the cost accountant, record the adjusting entries to move product cost out of expense accounts, and adjust them to actual, and record the movement of costs from work in process to finished goods to cost of goods sold. StudyMyAccounting.com does not have a section on using the standard cost method to record manufacturing cost. If you are having trouble with manufacturing overhead, you can use the job costing section because the normal cost method is used for both the norm, excuse me, because overhead is calculated the same for the normal cost method as it is for the standard cost method. Otherwise, please review the examples in your text or your course pack. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is much appreciated.